So today I'm going to talk about, I think, a, quite a different topic compared to the ones before. So I don't know if you all will be happy or unhappy about this topic, but at least as far as I know, this is the last topic. So, <laughs> so I just <laughs> go on with my work. So also, uh, uh, I have to mention our Collaborative Research Center because it pays for my salary. I'm obliged to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my, uh, topic is uh, on the wave propagation in periodic wave guides. Uh, this is the outline for that. Uh, it has five parts. First, let's begin with the background and application. <coughs> So uh, the applications, for example, it, it lies in the topic of photonic crystals. So it is uh, some kind of artificial multi-dimensional periodic um, structures. For example, it is periodic in one dimension, or in two dimensions, or in all the three dimensions. But as far as I know, the applications, the applications, people all, almost use these two kind of stuff. For the three-dimensional periodic ones, Mm, it is still quite quite new. I, I don't know any exact applications for that. So for the photonic crystals, uh, the for in, within the structure, uh, the the wave the uh, you give an incident field from one side, then some part of the wave will propagate, but some part will disappear, will be evanescent. It will be absorbed very fast within this structure, and the structure, it may be measured by centimeters or meters uh, large, but the, the, the period, it will be very, very small. They are measured in nanometers or maybe in micrometers. So in, 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 in my model, it is treated as an infinite, infinite domain filled with periodic uh, stars. So this is the, the, the model for that and the applications, for example, in the uh, communications, optical sensors, and solar cells, and so on. So they start for the background, but the problem I am talking about is quite simplified. So I only want to talk about this kind of waveguide. So it is omega is an um, infinite rectangle filled with periodic. Um, material like that, so the blue stuff, it means the material is different from the, the background and it is de denoted by omega, it is for simplicity, we take it as r times zero one. So actually it can be any kind of, um, of course, connected periodic um, structures, but of course we, we want to just simplify everything. And the boundaries, they are also denoted by gamma zero, gamma one, like that. So we are talking about only about the type harmonic waves. So the capital U, the wave is written as a real part of this one. So the, the, the dependence of T, on the time T, it is uh, periodic and multiply with the field small u. So only the field small u is interesting here. So it satisfies the Hempel's equation where a Q is a periodic and a positive refractive index, and the S is a source term. It is compactly supported, for example, uh, on the uh, blue um, disk here. So this is mathematical model for that. And also the boundary condition on, on the boundary of omega. So of course, this is only an example. It can be replaced. The boundary condition, it can be replaced by mm -hmm. any periodic boundary conditions. So this is the uh, uh, mathematical uh, uh, the, 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 the equations for that. And uh, the wave, it only travels within omega. It cannot propagate outside this, this structure. So the first question is, is the formula, I'm sorry, uh, I think the R is left. Is the formula sufficient to describe this phenomenon? Is that equations? Are there is sufficient? Here is a counterexample. For example, we take the easiest one, the planar waveguide, where Q is equal to one. So uh, I forgot to mention K is a positive wave number. So when Q equals to one, then this is K square, which is a constant. Then we can easily find um, 
infinite number of pairs of non-trivial solutions when the source term is zero. So uh, u n plus it is plus the square root and u n minus it is uh, minus the square root. So the square root it takes the non-negative real and the imaginary parts. So I just uh, I I don't show the pictures for that. Actually, if you uh, plot the picture with t, then you can see the, the movement with, with, with these waves. So if n pi is greater than, than, than k, then u n is blows up when x1 goes to the minus infinity. So when u n plus u n plus in this direction, it blows up. And u n minus it blows up in that direction. And when n n pi equals to k, for some cases it happens, then this is the standing wave, it will not propagate. And when n, n pi is smaller than k, then the, 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 the square root is real. For, for, some, for some cases it propagates to the right, and the, the other one it propagates to the left. So all of these solutions, they satisfy the, the, the non trip the, the there are the non trivial solutions when the, for the case when f equals to zero. It means only the equation, uh, all, only this equation, it is not sufficient to describe this phenomenon because you don't know, it, it, it admits multiple solutions within this, within this strip. So, so the formula is not sufficient to, to describe this phenomenon. So that is why we will introduce the limiting absorption principle, which is a technique which is to, to choose the correct uh, solution. Sorry, I don't know why that solution for the for, for this for this problem. For example, basically speaking, when the for the right hand side, for the for the right right part, the wave can only propagate to the right, and it can only. Mm, propagates to, to the right, or at least it cannot blow up in the infinity. So we have to choose the right right wave that is physical. And this method it dates back to the over one hundred years ago. And of course, they are they are proposed not only for this periodic waveguides form, but for a more general case. So let's begin with another idea. So suppose. In some cases, at least as I showed, this equation it has multiple solutions. Some are physical, some are not. So, how can we fix the limit of our absorption principle? The main idea is if we add an uh, absorbing part plus i epsilon, so absorption part to the uh, to the wave number here, then we have a damped problem. So this problem. It is always uniquely solvable in H1 omega. But when in fact u epsilon, the, the absolute value is decays exponentially in the infinity. So this problem is always good. Then if we set u to be the limit of u epsilon when epsilon tends to zero in the sense of H1 local, then this is uh, the LAP solution. We call that a physical solution. So this is uh, a quite popular way now to, to get the physical solution. But I, but but recently my colleague Anias Kurt he, he proposed that maybe it is not that safe. So that is a completely different problem. So for my uh, my problem it arises here. So. <coughs> Since we get the physical solution from the LAP, what is the structure of the solution and how to simulate that numerically? My work is motivated by this paper by Patrick Julie, uh, um, uh, Rebecca Lee, and Sonia Fliss in uh, 2006. So this is one of the, I think, recently one of the uh, most important papers on this field. In, the, in, in this paper, they proposed a, a method to approximate the detour map. So the detour map, I, so the detour map, they, they want to approximate numerically on the left and the right to cut off the problem, to to reduce the problem into in, into a bounded in, into a bounded cell. So this is the the the, the purpose of the, the paper. But 
there is a conjecture. I think that is very interesting that shows that the translation operator it has an infinite Jordan form. So I will describe, uh, explain this operator later. And this paper um, solves this conjecture in some sense, but use a completely different way. So um, compared to my, my work. And there are many other numerical methods. I list a lot of names, but there are two basic ways to, to, to solve the problems numerically. One, one way is to use the approximate the detour map, and the other way is to do the mode expansion. So, but, but my work will <coughs> also be different from this one. I will explain that later. So, to, to get the, uh, the solution from the limiting absorption principle, we have to use the block block theory, which is a quite essential um, theory in the in the in this kind of problems. So first, I need to introduce some definitions and notations. So if we have a complex number z, then it is a floating multiplier if this equation. So uh, U satisfies the Hampel's equation with the zero source term in omega zero. So omega zero is uh, is one pure density cell. Um, so this is omega zero. The left boundary is gamma zero, right is gamma one, and the lower boundary is sigma minus and sigma plus. So this is one periodic cell. So it satisfies the zero, the zero boundary conditions on, on the lower and upper boundaries, but on the left and the right boundaries, it satisfies the so-called quasi-periodic boundary condition. So if this problem is 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 has a non-trivial solution, then the, the, the number z it is called a floating multiplier. And in this case, the non-trivial solution it is called a block wave solution. And we define the f as the set of all the floating multipliers, and uf it is the, the all the unit uh, floating multiplier. <coughs> For the non-trivial solution u, um, we also define the energy flux like that. Then uh, from the sign of the energy flux, we know that so sometimes the, the U propagates to the right, some to the left, and some sometimes it is standing. It is also related to the topic of the band structure. So if we U Z is still the uh, the, the floating multiplier, it is a complex value, but it can it so it can be written as e to the i alpha, where I, uh, alpha lies in the, 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 the strip in a complex domain, a complex plane. Then if alpha is real valued, then it depends analytically on the k square. K square is the k is a uh, positive wave number. So we can draw, for example, this is this is how. The, the wave the, the, the value it depends on k. So this 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 x is k square and this is alpha over k. So if k square, for example k square it lies in the right domain, then this is a stop band, which means there is no propagating wave. In this case everybody is happy because there is the problem is always uniquely solvable in the H1 space and the solution is the case exponentially. And if k square it lies in the pass band, it means there are block wave solutions, there are propagating waves. So in this case, it is quite complicated. We have to do a lot of effort to, 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 to work on that. And the band gap is the, the, just the similar to the topic stop band. So an also related topic is the inverse problem, which is if we want to some part, some some kind of wave can pass and some kind of wave cannot pass, then we want to design the structure with the desired band structure. But uh, I just want to mention this 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 topic here. So the floating blocks uh, theory. 
if we define the operator in 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 omega in the whole strip like that, and a a a z it is the uh, operator in in the periodic in 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 the quasi periodic space in just in in omega zero, then if the the spectrum of a it is the only of all the spectrum of z a z where z a z is the unit floki um, multiplier. It means that and so th it it is quite difficult to understand that, but I in, in translate that in the language that if the problem is uniquely solvable, it implies that k square is lies in the stop band like that, and it is also equivalent to the to to that. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake again. It, the, 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 the unique like, uh, multipliers, the set is empty. It's, it's, it's exactly equal, not mm, equal. So this is the Floki block theory. Then I will introduce the important tool here, the Floki block transform and its application, which is the key step to deal with the problem. So the Floki block transform is defined for, for example, for the compact support this we can find in the in the form of um, uh, um, yeah, of the Fourier Fourier series on the unit 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 circle in the complex plane. So this is the definition for that. So you can simply if you replace that by the constants, they are the the Floki well, the, the, the the Fourier coefficients. Just um, Replace the coefficients by the periodic function. So, some important properties for that. First, after transform, the transform field it is z quasi periodic when z is fixed, it, which means if we translate x1 to, to 1 in, on the right, then there will be a z here. So, this is z quasi periodic, and the inverse floating block transform is written as the the integral on the unit circle. And a very nice property for the transform is that it commutes with the Laplacian operator. Then we first apply the fluid blank block transform to the damped problem because only in, for this problem it is safe to do that because u epsilon it, it, it is unique and it decays exponentially. So only for this case, this transform is well defined. So then we can use the inverse transform to write u epsilon as an integral of w epsilon, like that. And what is w epsilon? We also we use the property of the log transform to show that u epsilon, w epsilon, it is z quasi periodic, means the boundary condition on gamma zero and gamma one, and it satisfies the equations with k square plus i epsilon. So we, for simplicity, we define the space h z one to be h one omega zero with the zero uh, with the z quasi periodic boundary condition on the left and right, and also h one periodic to be h one one. So this, <coughs> the, so so this um, space it satisfies the strictly periodic boundary condition. So suppose we we want we have got this form. And why can't we, can't we just take the limit epsilon when it turns to zero? The problem is when uf it does not uh, it is not empty. When epsilon turns to zero, it will to pose on s one, which means that the integral will be back. So the problem is what is the distribution of uf and what happens with when epsilon turns to zero. So we begin with the case when epsilon is zero, and then we can we also want to know if we perturb epsilon a little bit, what will happen. So the problem is to find the solution with the strong form here, and this all the solutions they lie in the space H Z one. They are different functor spaces for different Z. So we want to first to do the periodization to make it in, in one space. So if we let Vz to be z to the minus one, uh, x1, wz, 
then it is all lie in the safe space in the periodic space. And it satisfies the function as the, the equation which is different due to the transform. So here, the bad happens because we, we have to define this logarithm of the powers correctly, so we have to choose one branch cut for the for the for the for these functions. So we just choose the branch cut cutting along the negative real x. So unfortunately we had to, to do that. So we just uh, do the standard variational arguments to write that in the variational form and then finally we can show that we can rewrite the problem as um, uh, like that. So i minus kz on vz equals to fz. So, um, K, so i is an identity in, in, in this space. Kz, it is a compact operator and FD, this is the element in, in, in the space, and both KZ actually they are analytic with respect to this. So here, this list, this reminds us of this kind of form. This this is a um, thread form type operator depends analytically on the on, on, on the variable Z. So this leads to the analytic. Platform theory, which I just want to remind if, if anyone forget this. So if, if TZ is a, the, the comp, uh, a series of complex uh, operators and it depends on the Z, then either it does not, the inverse of that one does not exist, or it exists for, for all the Z except for a discrete side. And in, in as a discrete, it is actually analytic in the in, um, in, in this set and meromorphically on, on the so use this uh, theory we can conclude that with the it exists except for this in, in, in the branch if except for the discrete set and we we call that we get Vz from Wz, and Wz is a, it is actually the, the, the solution we want. We get back to that, and finally we can show that Wz, depending on Z, it is a meromorph, it, it is meromorphic, and all the poles they are the, all the floating multipliers. So this is the location of the, uh, so this is the relationship between W and Wz and the, the floating multipliers. So the next question is, what is the distribution of F? What is the properties of that? So F, first property, it is discrete with only the accumulation points at zero or infinity. Second, UF, the unit, so the multipliers, they are only a finite side, or maybe empty. Then, um, I just skipped this, this is not as important. And the important thing is here. So what is the, if we perturb the problem a little bit by, um, by uh, for a positive small epsilon, what will happen? So if, if <coughs> this zero, the zero is the, is the floating multiplier for the epsilon equals to zero. So if this zero, it, it lies inside the unit circle, so the uh, gray, Curve this is unit circle. So if they lie in the inside of the unit circle, then they will stay in the unit circle when epsilon is gets larger. When they zero, they are outside the unit circle. Then if you uh, perturb epsilon a little bit, then they will stay uh, still stay outside the unit circle. And this has the ones which are not on the unit circle, but if they zero, they are lying on the unit circle. Their uh, behavior will be different depending on the energy flux. So when I, the energy flux it is positive, which means the, the block wave solution it is propagating to the right, then the epsilon it will it, um, it will 
goes to the unit circle from the inside of that. And if the energy flux is negative, which means the related block wave solution is <coughs> propagating to the left, then if you perturb epsilon a little bit, then it will be outside this unit circle. So this is the important property for that. And this leads to the numerical method, which is called the complex integral contour integral method. So we recall that we have the, the, the damped problem, which is written in this way. And when epsilon tends to zero, then they are poles. So we want to avoid this pose. So the main idea is if we change the integral contour a little bit to re replace S1, then maybe we are lucky to avoid this pose to get the form which is also hold when epsilon tends to zero. So this is an idea for that. And let's see this 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 curve. So this is the smooth curve, and this is the piecewise uh, analytic curve. So if we just simply choose the curve that is avoid the, <coughs> the, 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 the avoid this this pose when epsilon turns to zero, then we just replace the S1 by C or C0, then everything looks fine. So this is the numerical method I, I propose. So first we can discrete this in curve integral on the constant zero or C. So we have the no dense numbers. Second, then we can solve each ZG quasi periodic problems by some standard method, whatever that matter. And finally, we can get the solution by this, just as simply add up this, this solutions. So this is the first part, the numerical solution. So, so the advantage for that, first, we don't need the limiting process because we get the solution theoretically from the limiting, but the limiting process is really not a good news for numerical. And if you choose epsilon very, very small, then the solution will decay very, very slow at the infinity. But on the other hand, we want to get the solution when epsilon turns to zero. So that is the problem. So our advantage for that is we don't need the limiting process. And um, for another class of numerical methods with mode expansion, we need to solve the eigenvalue problems, which is always, always quite challenging from numerical point of view. So, but for, 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 for this method, we only need to roughly know the locations. So it doesn't matter if the shape is chosen at this one or this one. That's the matter. And we can always easily get the high order method and the quasi periodic problems can be solved in parallel, so very efficient. And if you perturb Q a little bit, just perturb the Q, then we can easily, ex easily extend the method to that. But some problems. First, for so one Z in the, in the, as a unit uh, floating multiplier, it, is it can be associated with multiple floating you know, uh, wave solutions, with multiple propagating waves. But if it is associated with, it is with one wave that propagates to the left and another one to the right, then it fails. And no standing waves is permitted. So actually, I, I even other methods, as, as far as I know, this is also exclusive. But fortunately, this case only happens quite rare. So it is still safe to say the method is, is, is fine. But the problem is, if we perturb the shape, so if there is a hole here, so the free totally is fine, but there is a, is a hole here, then it doesn't work. Because I, I'm also interested in the inverse problems. This is also an interesting topic. So this is a big problem for this method. So this is for the first part, the numerical, numerical method. And the last part is for the spectrum de decomposition of the translation operator. So, what is the translation operator? So we want to define the space x so to be h one half gamma one. So h one half or gamma one, gamma two, and everything is, is, is the same. So we write that as x. And the translation operator it is it maps u uh, from gamma one actually to gamma two. And recall the conjecture that t this operator it has an infinite Jordan form. 
what we know is T is compact and the, the, the norm, the, the spectrum norm is smaller or equals to one. So we only take takes the translation operator in from gamma one to gamma two from, from this this cell. Actually T from gamma two to gamma three and for others they are all the same. So we only need to focus U in omega one. You know, omega one, which means we take n equals to one, then u is written in this way. Right. We have already defined C zero, which is the curve, um, which is a modified a modification of S one. So the interior of C zero it contains infinite number of poles. We did not that by F plus, but there are only there is only one accumulation point which is zero. So this is F plus. <clears throat> we, um, from this representation, C0 is a curve which contains um, many poles inside. A natural idea is to apply the residue theorem. But unfortunately, the residue theorem only works for finite number of poles. So the first thing we have to do is to generalize the residue theorem to infinite number of poles, but with accumulation point. So the first uh, result is uh, the generalized residue theorem, which says that if you have infinite number of poles, but with one accumulation point. Actually, for finite number of accumulation points, it always works. So we have this is C, and this is the zero. So you, uh, so you have infinite num number of poles, but Finally, there is only one accumulation point. It is said that if you have a series of radius, R1 greater than R2 greater than Rn, which means you have a series of circles. So R1, R2, and do some Rn. If the integral, the curve integral, it tends to zero when n tends to infinity, here, when n tends to infinity, r n tends to zero. Then you can also write the you you can also use the residue theorem here. So so the radius at the g is written as this. This is just the definition of that. So this is the first one we uh, we get, and then we just simply apply this result to the for the solution because u x one minus one x two is written as an integral on C zero. So I simply extend the the, 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 the generalized radio theorem to the sublimit space to write u x one plus one uh, x two to be the sum of all the residue. So to prove that is quite difficult to just to choose this the series of R n and to prove this um, the limit tends to zero. Then each ZG plus is the pole of that. This, this is the pole of the operator. It implies that there is a positive integer mg such that the, in the neighborhood of ZG plus, the inverse of this operator it can be written as a series. Just uh, the, 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 the meromorphic. Uh, uh, it's just uh, because they is the pole. Then we get the final result when ZG plus is an eigen, uh, uh, each ZG plus is an eigen, eigenvalue of T and the X is the H1 half space is written as the, um, it, it, it is the closure of this, this space. So N is a, the kernel of this operator. So I just simply want to Go, go through the proof. First, we have to prove that x equals to the order of the functions all, with all these forms, where f is in L2. And it can be deep, and then we can also decompose this space by all these integrals on the small uh, circles with the center zg plus. So this, uh, this is the first step. And then for the second step, we if we define v to be any function in this in, in this form, then we can prove that v is uh, lies in the kernel of this operator. So the key step here. So 
Since V is defined in this way, then we use the, the T wave, it is from the from from, from gamma one to gamma two to gamma two, then we have an additional Z here because each fixed Z it is satisfy the the quasi periodic boundary condition. So there is an actual Z here. Then we can um, use this for multiple times. Then we can also show that for any polynomial t, p, then dt on v it results in p z here. Then <coughs> we can particularly choose p z to be a special polynomial. It is z minus z g plus of minus uh, m g. Then we can do the calculation. So this one it is equal to if we replace p z by z minus z g plus. To the power of mg, then we expand this this inverse operator by the you know this is a, a depend it is zg plus is a pole here, so you can do the expansion here. Then mg this is mg and l is from minus mg, which means it is you multiply this together, then this is analytic, so the pole disappears, so the integral equals to zero. Which means that V it lies in the kernel of this operator. So this finishes this this proof. So I hope you you can still get an idea of that. <laughs> and I know this is quite <laughs> complicated. So I just want to go to the further topic and and it seems it's finished. So uh, first I have proved that the, the, the operator it has an infinite Jordan form, but as far as I see from numerical point of view, the form is actually diagonal. But we know that for numerical result, it is not that masterful. So I, I, I guess it is diagonal. And in, a, in, a, in a, another reference I, I mentioned, they proved that the only finite number of uh, Jordan blocks they are of the size of greater than one. But there's still a little gap here. And so, and another method I mentioned is the mode expansion. So the mode expansion method for the new numerical solution, it solves the problem that <coughs> of my, my work. For example, for example, when the, the same floating multiplier z, it is related to different block waves, one to the left and one to the right. So for my, work, for my method, it, it is a problem. But for mode expansion, there is no problem. But the problem is how to solve that efficiently. Then, uh, a very interesting topic is for, is for the 3D problem because we know we are actually living in a 3D space. But if the, the structure is periodic in only one dimension, the extension is not that difficult. But for two dimensions, it's, it's a disaster. So, I talked with my colleagues for over three or four years, but still no clue. Except, except of very, very easy cases. And I think an, a big topic is the inverse design problem to, if we want the band structure to look like that, then how to uh, determine the refracting index. I, I believe there are some, some <coughs> methods from the engineers, but for mathematics, this is sometimes it's a different thing. So. I'm also quite interested in this topic. So thank you very much for your attention.